Hi, I'm Scott Neiser. Welcome to Yoga at Crozet Arts. We're going to do some chest opening, back bending sequence today. Hugo's joining us. We're going to start in Virasana and stretch our arms. So come on up. And if you need to put a lift under your sit bones, you can pull the flesh from your calves back. And you want to be on the tops of your feet. Spread your toes. And let's clasp our hands, Bandhuguliasana, and out, and up. Elbows straight. Let's let the hands come back down behind the head. And just bring the shoulders can relax down for a minute elbows wide and you're going to reverse the clasp they go towards the ceiling and straight up you can see how quickly it brings warmth to the shoulders and the upper arms and coming down all right, sometimes if you've been sitting here for a little bit, it uh, can feel nice to come up onto all fours and just stretch each leg out. Or if you get a little, little cramp, just press into it to the side. That might look like this. Pressing into it. All right, we're gonna do that progression that we do sometimes in class, which is gonna go from cat-cow to child's pose to something I like to call upward sphinx, a little bit of a hang with the hips, starting to open, get our spines getting to be uh, warming up, flexible, um, and then we'll move into downward dog to upward dog. So it'll be a little series, I'll just talk you through it. Um, you shouldn't need, you know, if you really need something under your knees, we'll only be on your knees in the beginning for cat-cow, but come on up to all fours, so hands underneath your shoulders, knees underneath your hips, and you're on the tops of your feet. Spread your fingers, Elbows straight and inhale, inflating the chest. Keep the neck long. And exhale, head gets heavy, tailbone gets heavy. Rounding up. Sorry, I have a little foot cramp. And inhale. Exhale. and exhale inhale now we're going to transition so the toes will come together and you'll sit back into child's pose lengthen your hands away from you so elbows are straight forehead on the mat and coming up You'll just separate your feet and hopefully your arms will be in the right position. If they're not, you can move them a little further away from you. But I'm letting the hips drop. I'm protecting the lower back. The chest is lifted. Backs of the thighs are spread. And again, toes together, sinking the hips back in child's pose. Coming up. chest. Don't sink into the shoulders. Lift up out of the shoulders. And toes together. And again Turn the toes and we'll press up and back into downward facing dog. I like to roll out of this. So I'm rolling the back, rounding, and then coming up into my Urdhva Mukha. And I'm staying on my bent toes just so it's easy to go between down dog and up dog. Hips high, again, 
back to down dog. I'm going to start the roll. And opening up to the front. And hips back. And one more time, peeling forward. And just bring the knees down. And why don't we turn the toes and just sit back on those toes. If you have a foot cramp like I did, this really helps. We're gonna stand up next and do warrior one. So don't use your hands, use your non-dominant foot. Stand up, work on our balance. All right, warrior one. Um, I'll do it to the side so that you can see. And I think we'll start with the right foot forward. So we'll step the left foot back. And you wanna have those back toes turned in uh, at least 30 degrees. Um, your hips are even with each other as much as possible. And if your balance starts to go, a nice way to counteract that is to press the big toe side of the foot, the big toe mound of the foot into the floor. That can help if you start to feel wobbly. So we wanna lift the chest in this position so you do get a little bit of a, a back bending pose. Inhale the arms up, so chest lifted. And exhale, bending that front knee, but don't let the body come forward. You're lifting the chest away from that front thigh. And lift up on the left inner thigh so you're not collapsing in the back. Reach towards the ceiling. And inhale and come up. All right, so I think I'll just go right to the other side. So that's left foot forward, right leg back, toes turned about 30 degrees in and you are bringing the hips in line. Inhale the arms up and then you're going to bend that left knee working towards that left thigh being parallel to the ground and you're lifting the back inner thigh so that means this so it's not collapsing down you're lifting it up as the chest lifts. Right. we're gonna do dancer pose if you want to hold on to something that's fine a lot of times we do in class you can use a belt but it's fine just grabbing your foot also I'm going to demonstrate it with the bar and then show you what you would do with the arm if you want to work on your balance so you would have the right hand on the bar we're gonna stand on the right foot not turned out Bend the left knee grab the left foot and the knee is gonna go straight back so left knee straight back chest lifts so the body has to come forward as the knee goes back. So as my knee lifts them a little bit more, I need to come forward. That's it. So the arm and the foot work in opposition, but they help each other. And then the arm can come forward if you want to work on the balance. And up. We'll turn around to the other side. This time you're standing on your left foot, bending the right knee, Grabbing that right foot. So grab from the outside this time. And the right knee comes straight back. You see how my chest immediately starts to lift. The knee comes further, chest lifts, and I'm also coming forward. And at some point, if you want to work on the balance, the arm goes up. And coming down. All right, we are gonna lay down. So I am gonna put a blanket down, but just on my midsection, sometimes that can hurt your, your belly area. If you wanna put a blanket down, I like that. Just don't have it underneath where your arms are gonna be. So we're gonna come down onto your belly, and we're gonna start in sphinx. So come up onto your forearms, fingers spread, roll onto the tops of your legs and the back. So doing that helps you spread this lower back area, keep us pain-free in the back area. So don't sink down into the shoulders. You're pressing into the forearms to lift up. Chest is lifted and let the head come forward. 
Just letting the weight of the head stretch the back of the neck. Our, wet, our heads are very heavy. And then lifting the head up. We're gonna come down. You can rest your forehead on your arms for a moment. Lengthen the back of your neck. And then bring your hands next to your chest. We're gonna come up on tiger claws and bring them a little bit out so that the hands are underneath the elbows. Elbows are reaching high towards the ceiling. So a nice stretch in the front of the chest. And imagine that I am pressing in between your shoulder blades in the back, but the front is lifting. The neck is nice and long, pressing into the floor, almost lifting the chest off the floor. And release, and we're gonna do Shalabhasana, or locus, a couple of different ways. First way, we're gonna reach the arms forward in a fist and bring the elbows out to the side. So starting here on your forehead, again, making sure that you're really on the tops of the legs, because the legs are gonna lift, they're straight. The chest is gonna lift, the arms reach forward. So reach forward in a fist, and then just bringing the elbows out to the side helps keep the chest lifted in the front and come down. We're going to do that one one more time. And reach the arms forward, legs up, elbows to the side, chest lifted, and come down. And the third time we're going to reach the arms back. Pretty classic way. Arms are reaching, thumbs face, facing towards the floor. Really helps to lift and roll the shoulders back to lift the chest. So third time and up, reach back with the arms, keep the neck nice and long. And coming down. We'll move into Danyarasana or bow. So for that, you can use a strap if you don't easily reach your ankles. Otherwise, keep your thumb with your hand as you reach around as opposed to gripping your ankle like this reach around and you'll grab the other. Remembering that the feet help pull the arms and the hands help pull the legs. And lifting up. Don't hold your breath when you're up here. And coming back down. And again, lift up. Taking a breath here. And last time, lifting up. And come down. All right, let the legs straighten. We're gonna do a twist here. Um, I'm actually gonna twist around so that my head is facing the front towards you. All right, so for this, let's bring the right arm is gonna reach back and you're gonna grab the left foot and then you're gonna roll onto your left side. So rolling onto the left side, the right foot and the left arm are reaching that away. Coming back to your belly, we'll do that on the reverse. So now the left arm is gonna reach the right foot, rolling onto the right side, reaching the other limbs over to the left. And coming back. We are gonna do camel. So if you want a blanket under your knees, that's fine. If you know you need blocks or a bolster, you may use it. Otherwise, challenge yourself. 
So you also want to try to do it on the tops of your feet as opposed to having your toes bent. That's a little easier with your toes bent. And keep your hips over your knees. Even if you have to lean back to get your foot, you want to press those hips so that they stay back in line with the knees. And don't let your feet come together. You want them extended out exactly from where your knees are. And they really are the brain of the pose to press into the shins and the feet. That's in opposition once you're in the pose. If you press into the shins, it helps lift the chest up. So the sternum in the front is lifting towards the ceiling. All right, so here we go. Reaching back, hand to heel, sternum towards the ceiling, pressing into your shins. And if your neck is in good shape, let the head come back and breathe. All right, feel free to do that a couple of times. Sometimes I like to just stay in it um, a little longer and breathe or come up and down. All right, so we're gonna lay on our backs. I'm gonna take the blanket off. We're gonna do a slow rolling up using our arms. All right, so really lengthen that tailbone, feel all of the areas of the spine on the mat. Bring your heels fairly close to your sit bones. All right, when we lift up, you're gonna be pressing the knees away from you. Spread your toes. And for this version, we're gonna let the arms reach up and over with it. So I really want you to feel each part of the spine lifting up. We're gonna start with the tailbone, rolling up until the chest comes close to the chin. All right. So press into the heels, knees pressing away from you, lengthening the tailbone, rolling up, arms come up. And then I hit the peak and I start rolling down each vertebrae. That's it. And each time I lengthen the tailbone towards the heels and you come down. Lift, rolling up. Reach the arms. And make that away. That's it. And again, up. And down. All right. We're going to do Urdhva Dhanurasana. So if you have a bolster at home or a chair and you're used to laying over it to help you do a back bend, that's fine. I'm just going to do one today. Sometimes I press up and down just to uh, work on strength. Other times I like to get into the pose and stay for a few breaths to really let the body take the shape of the pose. And I think that helps in different ways than always just doing the multiple times, so try it different ways. Um, again, the heels are close to the sit bones. Reach your arms up and over, so you're flexing the hands. The fingers are gonna point back towards your body. And then press into the feet, the heels, hands lift up off the mat. Notice how your breathing might change in this pose. Definitely a little harder to breathe. And carefully coming down. All right. We're going to take in a different direction now that we've done all of this back bending and chest opening and do a downward facing dog, but is doing it a, a very long dog. It should feel nice. I want you to keep the belly soft and um, literally long in length. So coming up to all fours, spread the fingers, turn the toes, and just really make length. This should feel really good after all of that on your lower back, thoracic spine, neck. And come down 
to your knees. Always helpful to do a few opposing poses at the end of a class like that. Back bends, all that chest opening is incredibly invigorating, can make you happy, give you some energy, but sometimes you need to tone it down a little bit. So let's inhale the arms up. And exhale, reaching beyond your feet, soft belly. And if you wanna hold the belly, kind of push it in a little bit. Just really rounded, nice and calming on the, the brain and the head. You're not needing to get as much of a hamstring stretch here, more just rounding the back. So it's gonna be a little, little bit floppier than we normally do, Paschimottanasana. That's a technical term, floppy. And inhale and come up. Well, thank you for joining me today for back bends and chest opening. And um, I'm going to play my bowl to let you have some time to lay either flat in Shavasana or if you prefer to sit up and maybe have uh, a meditation for yourself, please do that. But thank you. Namaste. Mark, yes. you're snoring in oh, my video. Sorry. Uh -huh.